Today we will see how these wheel encoders work and how to combine them with these disks to read the wheel speed. Welcome to part 3 of our Mark01 project. These sensors have three pins, one for power, one for ground, and one output that will be connected to one of the Raspberry Pi IOs. And this one here is cool because it also has an LED to show the state of the output. This encoder also has an infrared LED on one side here and an infrared sensor on the other side. Every time something comes between them, the output change states. So if you make this disk here spin between the sensor and the LED, this will produce a train of pulses every time the wheel moves. Each edge of this pulses we will call a tick. We will count these ticks to estimate the wheel velocity. This disk here that I'm using has 40 ticks per resolution. Now let's download the project in the PC so we can check the documentation. Please use the link in the description to go to the project GitHub page and then click in code and download zip. In the doc folder we have the bill of material updated with the wheel encoder price and link. I also have updated the architecture with the new encoder connections. Here we can see both encoders connect to the GPIO 5 and 12, powered by a 3.3 volts from the Raspberry Pi. If you go inside the Raspberry Pi block, you can see how the software architecture looks like. The GPIOs are set up using the RPI GPIO library. I added a callback function that will be called every time there is a transition to high or to low. So we are using both transitions to call these callback functions. And then inside Mark01, I created a class called encoder that has a counter for each wheel. These counters will increment every time a transition happens. And then there is a speed estimator class that will use these counters from left and right wheel to calculate the wheel speeds, the robot speed and the robot angular speed. Going back to the doc folder, we have a new file called slides. Here you can find the formulas to calculate the speeds. So the first speed we calculate is the RPM for each wheel. The RPM will be the tick counted during some amount of time, some delta t. And this delta t is going to be in nanoseconds. So this formula here is for the delta t in nanoseconds and considering the wheel has 40 ticks per resolution. Once you have the angular velocity in RPM, you can find the angular velocity in radius per second. And then take some measurements like the radius of the wheel and how far they are apart. And use them to calculate the linear velocity and angular velocity of the robot. And I have a reference here to a Georgia Tech video explaining all these formulas. It's pretty cool, you should check it out. But the challenge that I had during this project was to fix the sensors close to the wheel disks. I could not find any brackets to buy, so I created my own 3D printed bracket and saved in the STL file to the 3D printer folder under the wheel encoder bracket file. The bracket has holes to screw the sensor at the top and more two holes at the bottom to fix it in the chassis. And that's how it looks like when mounted. Okay, so now let's test everything and see how that goes. Let's download the product to the Raspberry Pi and you can find this command in the description. And once everything is done, we're gonna navigate to the Mark01 folder and then to the source folder. Inside this folder you can see the video tree encoder.py that it's an example on how to set up all the IOs and calculate the RPMs in one single file. And then we have the Mark01 that is our main script that has the architecture that we discussed during the documentation review. So now let's execute the Mark01 and see how that goes. So we're gonna try to do some maneuvers here and the first one is just go straight. So I stop it right here and you can see that I have minus 50 something centimeters per second. And I also have some wheel angular velocity. And that's why, that's because my motors are not perfect. They, even if I apply the same voltage, they still don't have the same output. So that's gonna make my robot turns a little bit when it's going straight. 
So if I go back, you can see now that my velocity is pretty much the same, but it's positive. And I still have some some angular velocity, so my robot is still turning a little bit. Now let's here I'm just driving around, so you can see the velocities and the RPMs and the angular velocity uh, changing. And now let's try to do some spin. So here is the maximum speed that I can spin and it's something around 450 degrees per second. And if you notice I do have some speed, it should be zero, but again my motors are not perfect so my, my, I'm gonna have some speed that is gonna make my robot slide a little bit. So now let's try to do some uh, different speeds. So here is something around 14 centimeters per second and now I can try to go something around 20 centimeters per second and and here is me trying to do one turn per second 360 I actually didn't get there uh, but I was trying to do one spin per second the last maneuver that I want to show is when you are actually moving and turning at the same time so you can see that we have speed and we have angular speed at the same time Cool, that's it. Thanks for watching.